see the world through other people's eyes. Now, empathy is a quality of character that can change the world. Hi, it's Edwin Rutsch, and this is Dialogues on How to Build a Culture of Empathy. And today I'm here with Mark Rodriguez, who is Executive Director of Changing Worlds. Uh, thank you, Mark, for joining me. Sure, thanks for having me. Um, so there's, uh, I, I got connected to you by seeing that Ashoka has a, uh, a competition called Activating Empathy, and they had uh, 600 uh, uh, applicants to the competition, and then they just brought it down to 15 finalists, and your organization was one of the finalists. And so I wanted to uh, just hear about your program and and really see how it uh, kind of relates to uh, promoting empathy. Sure. Um, the program that um, is being recognized as a finalist for the Ashoka competition is called our Literacy and Culture Connections program. And basically that's an in-school arts and cultural awareness program that really uses the power of personal stories with cultures and the arts in classrooms and communities all over the city and surrounding suburbs. We're a Chicago-based organization. And really kind of our mission through this program is to help use stories and bring story, stories of students' lives, cultures, family and community histories into the classroom as a learning experience to not only help people affirm their identity and learn about the cultures, but to help increase their understanding of other cultures, develop empathy, develop ways to deal with challenges that may often arise without a deeper knowledge and understanding of each other. So our program is unique in a sense where it teams up literacy specialists and teaching artists to work alongside classroom teachers to really implement um, residency programs that are about 15 weeks in length and get young people engaged in all kinds of hands activities that deal with um, everything from culture and cultural awareness to changes, cultural traditions, norms, and a lot of comparing and contrasting and discussions. And the arts, visual arts, dance, or drama is infused throughout that as a way to help young people really be able to create and use the artistic talent that they have to create environments and communities that are accepting, that are tolerant and and really that are harnessing and celebrating their identities and cultures and their beliefs and using that as spoon for it to compare and contrast others and develop understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's uh, how many schools are you in? Or is it it's kind of like a, a program that you bring to the schools? Is that the idea then schools can implement it and it and it, then it brings in artists and you create uh, like a curriculum or yeah so we have curriculum frameworks and we're currently implementing the program in um over the well, over the course of the years we've implemented the program in as many as 20 schools uh this year we completed a three-year study of that program which found that our young people that were in our program outperformed non-participants on test scores, on cultural awareness and life skills or aware kind of uh, social emotional learning skills that really help to measure and connect closely with empathetic um, characteristics and skill sets, as well as learning in the arts, in and through the arts. Because of that result, we've um, launched kind of a replication or scale-up strategy to the program, we have about 60, uh, just over 62 schools in Chicago that are interested, and several in other cities as well as in, Chica in um, surrounding suburbs. So we will be in a lot more schools next year based on um, funding and interest. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, I, I have a whole section of magazine on empathy in the arts. So I think it's like a critical uh Part for really learning empathy and conveying our feelings and emotions. So how do you see kind of the program kind of digging in a little bit more? How is it really getting, uh, creating kind of empathy, would you say? So I think there's two clear distinct ways. Is one is through really using the personal stories of the students themselves, their lives and their cultures, and bringing that into the classroom 
where oftentimes the students' stories and experiences and cultures are not brought into the classroom. So once that creates initially an environment where there is a sense of acceptance or a sense that who they are is important. Um, and that builds a foundation for using those stories and the arts to help create empathy. And really, the arts is such a dynamic too to help with that process. It helps, I mean, really part of being empathetic is kind of, we believe is in order for you to develop those skills to be empathetic towards others, you have to first go some do some soul searching yourself and learn more about your own self and your own um, culture and your own traditions and everything and own conflicts that you have encountered, et cetera, and how then to explore how you might do that with others. So a lot of our focus of our curriculum begins with self and then spreads out to others within their immediate classroom community, the lar then the larger school community and the community outside of the, the actual school. And it's, uh, we believe that by working alongside classroom teachers and schools that they, as well as educators, are developing these skills to be able to use in their classroom so that they can continue using that. How do we bring in students' stories and students' cultures and the arts to serve as a tool to create empathetic communities and to build inclusive learning communities as well? Okay, so it's, saying it's really based around storytelling. So it's for the students to have a chance to kind of explore their own feelings and, and experiences and to be able to share those as stories and for those stories to be heard uh, through the arts by other students and the teachers and that that helps kind of create kind of connection um, between. That's right, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. And in our program, kids also go through the entire writing process to share that story or to share a story that they would share. Stories range from everything from immigration and labor movement stories that may have happened in their family to times when they might have been bullied or felt different or unwanted and how that has changed or how they would hope they would have felt. And really the exchange of that story, we feel that that, that story is the vehicle to help people learn about others. So when another young person is hearing a story when someone felt unwanted or didn't feel valued or a story about a larger societal issue and then they make that comparison and contrast and then they share their own stories that that dialogue begins to happen and through the arts that's portrayed in different ways through dance, through drama, through visual arts. To be able to portray those stories, able to really then create a broader sense of understanding not only within the young people in the classroom but also within the larger school community and the parents a lot of times our young people are teaching parents yeah so it's kind of it sounds like you're starting with the uh, children they're learning to express their feelings uh, their stories it's influencing the teachers because it's the teachers are, are, are learning the process as well and then they're taking those stories at home and it's kind of having a ripple effect then throughout society. That's right. And we believe that um, as an organization, if we work in collaboration with schools and help transform school communities and collaboration with teachers, that our impact will be that much greater. But as an organization, there's only so many teachers and schools we can touch at one time. But by giving teachers and schools the skill sets they need and the, the the strategies, the curriculum frameworks, the approaches to use in the classroom, they can continue to do this and create um, a ripple effect throughout their school, their community at large. Well, how are you being affected by the budget cuts? Because it seems that uh, the arts is like one of the first things that kind of gets cut in the school system. And I So one of the unique elements of our program is what we call this, this three-legged stool approach. So we have this culture, kind of student stories, culturally responsive teaching pedagogy, the arts, and writing and literacy. So because of those three components, schools, um, although they may be making cuts in the arts, um, they are seeing the value of the literacy piece of that or the social emotional learning aspect of that. So they see our program as really something that is could help address various challenges or various areas that they're trying to address. In some cases, unfortunately, where the arts have been cut, they see working like an organization like ours as a way 
to still keep the arts alive, even if it isn't kind of through a full-time staff of two or three, uh, an art teacher and a media arts teacher or a dance or a drama teacher or music mm-hmm. teacher. So you're kind of connecting the arts to other uh, aspects, like to literacy and to uh, kind of cultural um, right. relevance. So that kind of gives it more of a, an impact than... Right. Mm-hmm. And at this, uh, throughout the entire sense of the program, um, what's happening is kids are learning more, they're being more engaged. I mean, the need to feel valued, the need to see a connection to what you're learning, the need to be able to feel like you're important and that um, you have a voice. Um, those needs are addressed throughout our program, coupled with the literacy and the arts and and the cultural awareness. So those things really create meaningful communities that teachers can immediately see the change in student engagement. And then our the results of our three-year study we completed demonstrates the academic and tangible quantitative goals and outcomes of that. Uh, kind of from a personal point of view, how have you personally kind of seen the power of empathy? When did you see, you know, kind of looking back through your life, is there like a story where you you really learned something, had a real insight about uh, the nature of empathy and its importance? For me personally, it's been really about through the exchange of stories. Through, I mean, as in, and one example was when I was a kind of a, a teenager, and I went to a local boys and girls club, and we were doing some cross kind of programming with another site that was uh, of, of a different culture of ours to mine. And we began sharing our own stories about challenges we faced in our community and identified there was a lot more similarities than differences. And that if we were only able to open up that experience, that that would be, you know, that would be helpful. And I had a really, growing up in Chicago public schools, I had a very challenging high school experience. Um, and that really pushed me into the work that I do today. Um, it was very gang infested. There was a lot of racial tensions. There was a lot of lack of empathy. Um, and it was just really back when, you know, the 80s, when 80s, when late 80s or so, when urban education was, you know, really at risk. And it still is. There still are many challenges that we face within our urban education system, but I think some of the things have progressed tremendously since I recall being in school. And organizations like Changing Worlds, like Ashoka and this Activating Empathy work, and many other organizations around the globe that are seeing the need for this and kind of infusing it within schools and community-based settings. Well, what, what I'm working on is how do we build a culture of empathy? So it's really to do movement building to promote the value of empathy in the broadest sense throughout society. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if you have some kind of insights from your experience that could help in in, uh, in that vision. I'm the firm believer that uh, people learn best experien- by experiencing things in an experiential mode or modality. So I think anything that we can do to share stories, to share highlights, to use the media, to use social media, to use um, everything that we can to help people create connections or relate to others, I think is one of the most powerful ways to be able to do that. And then I believe the arts is equally powerful. So um, looking at how in our stages, um, in our local cities or in our communities, how the content of what's being delivered also exemplifies or demonstrates that. So I think by creating opportunities for us to communicate about this, to create a dialogue, to be able to read and connect and share stories and to be able to use the power of the arts, um, how it's been implemented in various ways throughout the city. I know next year we'll be embarking as an organization on a public art competition that will be, will be not, not so much a public art competition, but a public art initiative uh, well, we'll be looking at how do we address peace, nonviolence, and develop empathetic communities. Oh, great! Yeah, the uh, the way I've been approaching it is is dialogue. You know, like with these dialogues that mm-hmm. we're doing right now, the kind of the more we can talk about it, the more we can bring it up, 
uh, you know, that and kind of create eventually a whole national, uh, international dialogue, kind of foster that. Uh, you mentioned, you know, the arts, and a lot of times I like to start these uh, interviews with a, a metaphor for empathy. Uh, you know, empathy is often defined as uh, standing in someone else's shoes or looking through someone else's eyes. And for me, empathy is like a cornucopia in that I get to share everyone's experience and connect to them. I'm wondering, uh, kind of from your own creative uh, imagination, uh, what was your uh, metaphor for what is empathy like as a metaphor? Yeah, for me, I would say um, that empathy is really transferring kind of, for me, it's the, the, the transferring that happens, I see it most, especially a lot with the arts, um, because the arts, when you're an observer and you don't have, you know, oftentimes in challenging or conversations or topics that aren't always discussed, it's often difficult to engage two people directly. But when you can observe something and create a connection to that, so for me, it's the, the transferability and the ability to really kind of immerse yourself, ref take a step back, reflect, and then um, that I think to me is how I would kind of define as, as empathy and what I would look, what I, how I would say, some people say it's standing in someone else's shoes. I think it's observing and reflecting um, that's really about you know, how you then internalize that. So empathy is like uh, stepping back and then reflecting someone else. Right. Uh -huh. So the transferring and I, I would also call, I call it, the, we, we use um, kind of comment here about the mirrors and windows. So it's a, looking at yourself, it's the mirrors and windows theory, looking at yourself first and then opening the window to look into the broader um, stories and lives of others so it's I, kind of the mirrors and windows theory is what i often refer to it as okay so is there any other final thoughts you have that you feel should be covered that would be important to about your program and empathy that you haven't talked about i think that really i've had a chance to kind of address a lot and share some information about the program um, individuals that are interested can visit our website at changingworlds.org and really for me if everyone takes a step back to look at themselves in the mirror and open kind of the windows and mirror and open the window to new ideas and dialogues that together we'll be able to move this needle on developing empathetic communities not only within the US but internationally and globally Okay, well, Mark, I want to think. Oh, sorry, sorry, was there no, a bit I was more? Saying uh -huh. The reality is that, you know, there's, this is going to be, we're in a global environment and barriers and lines and artificial lines and territories will soon cease to exist. And we need to be able to learn how to, to interface both locally, globally, and empathy is part of that. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing your time and, uh, I want to wish you good luck with that, uh, the uh, Activating Empathy uh, competition. And it sounds like a wonderful program. I have a warm spot in my heart for the arts. So it's really uh, great to see your program. And and uh, right. so thank you very much. And uh, we're also, we're also uh, continuing doing uh, panel discussions and uh, networking with other people, you know, in, in kind of group calls too. So perhaps sometime we can kind of keep that dialogue going with other organizations. Sure, I'd love to be involved or engage in any of those processes. Um, as everything, it's just a matter of when and how it happens and how we can fit it into our lives. But I'm definitely committed to doing so. Okay. So okay. keep me in the loop. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Mark. Thank you for your time. See the world through other people's eyes. Now, empathy is a quality of character that can change the world.